Welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart a Dell Inspiron 14 7000 series laptop. This is a 7460. And to do this, we're just going to be using a small Phillips head bit. This is a 2.5. So first we're going to turn it over and we're going to remove the bottom case screws. Right, now that we have those bottom case screws loosened or removed, uh, we can go ahead and pop this bottom case off of the laptop. Uh, the easiest way I found on these Dells, because the seam is pretty tight oh, all the way around, um, is just to get some kind of object here and just pop up on the bottom cover uh, from around the display assembly. That will allow you to get it started and then once you have it partially popped up, then you can take a flat tool and finish working our way around. And once you have that bottom case off, you can access the internals of the laptop. All right, so as usual, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the battery. So we'll go ahead and take out the screws and disconnect the connector. All right, so the easiest way here is to just go ahead and lift that battery up and pull it back a little bit to give you a little bit more room to pull that connector out. And you can just grab that little piece of tape and kind of wiggle that connector out. And that's how you remove the battery. All right, next we will do the SSD drive. Uh, it's just one screw, so once you remove the screw, you can just flip it up and pull it out. And we can repeat with the Wi-Fi card. Once you have the screw out, you can remove the little cover and the antennas just pop up and off. So just push up on those and then they'll pop off the card and just pull it out of the slot. And for your memory stick, just spread the little retainer bars and then we can pull it out of the slot. All right, if you do have a secondary hard drive, uh, it looks like there are four screws holding in the caddy. This is a caddy for a 2.5 inch hard drive. So if, you're, if you have a second hard drive, whether it's an SSD or just regular spinning SATA drive, it will be in this slot. Now if there was a hard drive in here, there's going to be a screw for each side, or two screws on each side to remove the hard drive. And we have an unused SATA connector, and this is what we will be plugged into the drive. So you'll need to uh, pull this out of the hard drive, and then to release it from the motherboard, we'll just flip up on that retainer. And that will allow us to remove the SATA connector. All right, giving a quick look, looks like we just have the in-out board and the fan that needs to come off before we can remove the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and do that. So for the connector for the in-out board, it's just a strictly a pull-up type. So I'll just pull up on that little piece that they give you and it'll pop right up off the motherboard. And then we'll go ahead and finish unthreading the Wi-Fi antennas from the fan since we'll be removing that. And then we can go ahead and remove the screws for the in-out board. And it 
also has the pram battery as well. All right, so the fan and heat sink are separate, so we will go ahead and remove the screws for the fan. And then to remove the connector, we're gonna get our fingernails on there and pull it straight out of the connector. And then we can remove the cooling fan. All right, for the heat sink, there's gonna be four screws. And the screws are numbered in order that you're supposed to tighten them back up if you are installing it with new thermal paste. But as far as removal, you can remove the screws in any order. But if you are reinstalling, then it's best to tighten it down in the order that is stamped on the heatsink. So this, the thermal paste is still pretty new. Sometimes it can get kind of old and will stick to the CPU. So sometimes you might have to wiggle the heat sink to get it off, but this one was no problem. All right, so it looks like the DC jack is underneath the hinge. And it's plugged in all the way over here, so that's not going to be a problem. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just we'll now unhook all of the different connectors that are going to the motherboard, and then we can remove the screws. So for the touchpad, the keyboard, uh, backlight, both just have that flip up type connector. So let's flip it up, remove the cable, and then flip it back down. And the keyboard has the same style. As well as for the front LEDs. And then the speaker connector, we're just gonna wiggle out, directly out. And looks like for the display cable, um, this type, it's also a flip up type connector but it does have little notches on each side, so you, you'll have to lift up a little bit before you can pull it out. But it comes out easy enough. All right, so we're looking good. I don't see any other uh, ribbons connected to the motherboard, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the screws. Once we have those screws loosened, we'll just give it a little wiggle, make sure that it's coming out freely, nothing else stuck to it. And then we'll slowly turn it over and make sure that there's no ribbons underneath, which there are not. And that is how you remove the motherboard. All right, so it looks like the keyboard is not replaceable. The backing plate is riveted into the palm rest. So if you need to replace your keyboard, um, you're gonna to have to replace the palm rest as an assembly. Uh, the touchpad is replaceable. The four screws here on the top and it'll pivot out and then you can replace that. And speakers are just held on by grommets. And it looks like for the DC jack, we're gonna take that off um, as soon as we loosen these hinges and swivel them up out of the way. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And after we have removed the screws for the hinges, then we should be able to, to swivel them out of the way and then separate the two pieces, the display assembly from the palm rest assembly. So just like that, just swivel those hinges up and out of the way and make sure that the Wi-Fi antenna and the video cable are not connected to anything. And lastly, before we separate, I'm gonna go ahead and finish removing the DC jack. And we can just pick up one little end of the palm rest and we'll have to swivel it up to get around the hinges 
and then we can remove the palm rest from the display assembly. So we have a complete palm rest and that is pretty much disassembled. All right, so we're just left with the LCD screen. Um, unfortunately on this type of LCD, the front bezel does come off, but the actual LCD is heavily adhered to the back cover. Um, so in order to actually try to replace the LCD panel by itself, um, you're gonna definitely need a heat gun and some way to carefully pry that screen out of the assembly. Luckily, these assemblies are not too expensive. Um, as of today, uh, they're going for about 70 to 80 bucks on eBay or Amazon. So it's definitely worth considering if you have a broken screen to go ahead and buy the complete assembly. Um, the bezel itself is also kind of a pain to take off because they've added a ton of adhesive here at the bottom. Um, so there's a good chance that if you do try to take this apart without using the heat gun correctly, you're going to break some stuff. It's just, it's an LED LCD, so it's very thin and it would just seem very, very hard to be able to unstick it from the back cover without breaking it. So I don't think these are really meant to be serviced by themselves. Um, so definitely if you need a screen, uh, buy a complete assembly and you'll save yourself a lot of time and a lot of headache. So that's how you disassemble a Dell Inspiron 14 7000 series laptop. And again, this one was a 7460. So if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.